let's talk Cajun now. We're going to make one of the basic items here in Cajun cooking and that is the rich dark mahogany roux that's used in making etouffee gumbos and you don't have to make this in a cast iron skillet as you see this is a heavy bottom thick bottom skillet pan saute pan and we will be doing it in here with no problem this is a half a cup of vegetable oil in here and one cup of flour I will be adding a little bit more flour to this I don't like to use a very loose roux in cooking because when you thicken up items there's no reason to have more fat content in it than necessary. As you see the flame, moderate flame, once you start making this roux, you can't leave it. It's not the type of roux that you could just place in the oven and think, oh, it'll brown in the oven. It's cooked on top of the stove. It comes out with a very nutty flavor and the color has to be a nice rich mahogany looking if you should have any black spots in the roux while you're making it you have to start all over because you did ruin the roux when this gets to the point where <clears throat> I'm starting to get a little more color I'm just gonna add maybe another tablespoon or two of flour I will not be filming this in its entirety because it's a rather, rather long process and there's no reason to do it. As you can see, and please don't burn yourself, this, the roux with the flour is very hot. When this is done, the roux, this mahogany roux, will still keep cooking in here because of the intense heat. And when you're making a gumbo or an etouffee, if you make the right amount of roux, what you will do is add your vegetables into the roux at the very end. This will cool off the roux and prevent it from darkening anymore. It's just one of those little secrets that you get after spending three and a half years in uh, New Orleans. What a great city for food. I spent my time down there at the Royal Orleans Hotel. The old St. Charles Hotel, when Sheraton took it over, the International Hotel, and I worked closely with Paul Prudhomme in the Chefs Association, he being the president at the time in the late 70s and I being the secretary. I picked up a few pointers from him. I could see now that the roux is slowly starting to darken just a little bit. When it starts to darken just a little bit more, I'm going to lower the flame and we're going to do this process nice and slow to avoid any black spots in the roux because I would hate to have to make this over again. If you notice the texture, it's still very loose so we're going to add, as I mentioned before, more flour. That's one tablespoon. That's another tablespoon. That's two tablespoons of flour. And I think I have just about reached the consistency. No. Let's make it three. 
three tablespoons of flour. And also by cooking the roux this way, it has less of a thick trial and error, experiment a little. And when you come out with something good, stick with it. Look at that color. We are just about done. That is a nice dark brown. And what I'm going to do in about another minute or less, which is just about now, because that's about the color of the soup that I like. The uh, gumbo and the etouffee sauce, which will have etouffee, will have tomatoes in it also. We'll shut it off. <clears throat> now it's still cooking because it's so hot. But it will also start to cool down. The more you stir it, allowing the air to enter into this, which helps it cool down a little bit. It will still darken, which is okay. I'd like to have it just a little bit darker, but I want it to stop. So we'll stand here just for a few more minutes, stirring it like this. I don't want to bore you with this. This stirring here will take about four or five minutes. As I said previously, see at this point if you were making the roux and you had your stock here and your vegetables, you would just take your minced up uh, onions, celery, and uh, green pepper and just drop it right into this. This would stop this from cooking any longer. Then after a few minutes you would wait because if you would add extremely hot roux like this to a pot of uh, boiling stock it would just come up and over because this is just way too hot. So you would add this the only thing you'd have to do is, uh, I like to saute the garlic a little bit, not just add it to the roux, but the vegetables are okay. And there we are. This has stopped uh, cooking at this point, and I've reached that color. That's it. All done.